countdown to kickoff, heading out to New Orleans with Juan Kincaid of WWL-TV. The Saints seem like a tough bunch. They are they seem ready to make another run at the Super Bowl. Only had nine picks last year on defense. They lost Darren Sharper. Is this a concern for the team? Um, I think it's a concern if they can't get the kind of pressure with their front four that they hope to this year. They put a lot of effort in the offseason into – uh, upgrading their defensive line, bringing in Bray Franklin, bringing in Sean Rogers, um, because they they want to be able to stop the run this year much better than last year and get a lot of pressure with that front four. But they're always going to play the same kind of defense approach in terms of they're going to blitz cornerbacks, blitz the linebacker, blitz the safety. They're going to continue that philosophy, but they've got to stop being able to play defense with the front four and stopping teams that way. Uh, what's going to hurt them in the first game, maybe the first two games, Will Smith is out with the suspension. Uh, they got, um, they, they, they've got nothing but young guys behind Will Smith, and so that's a real big question mark going into the first game. Now, when you talk about the wide receiver position, there's Devery Henderson, Robert Meacham, uh, Marquise Colston. It seems like a very deep position. Would, they, would you say the wide receiver position is the deepest on the team? Well, it's being tested right now. You know, over the last two or three years, wide receiver has been the deepest spot on the team. But, you know, also running back is, is a deep, deep spot. I mean, you've got Chris Ivory who's not going to play for the first six weeks. But you've got Joy Bell, guys who discovered. I uh, brought him in late last year. Obviously, Mark Ingram. In fact, they have Pierre Thomas back there. Darren Sproles is back there. They, they're deep at the, at the running back position, too. But, but the wide receiver spot has been a traditionally deep position with them over the last three or four years. Um, and the, the base of one through five haven't really changed. Now what's going to happen in the first game is going to be without Lance Moore, who is you know, two years ago he was your top receiver as far as most catches uh, for the season. He's out for the first game with a groin injury. Not sure when he's going to be back. So and these guys like Mark Colson and Debra Henderson and Robert Meacham pick up the slack. Adrian Arrington is a young guy they have so much uh, promise with and expectations of uh, in but he hasn't really shown through once the season rolls around. This is a, he was a real surprise to make the team. Uh, Joseph Morgan was a young kid that they picked up in the uh, free agency. Um, uh, his rookie, fantastic tra- uh, training camp, but then he's out for the season on injury reserve with an injury as well. So wide receivers traditionally been a deep spot, and it's really being tested right now. Let's stay with the running backs for a second. You mentioned them. i got to ask you one. Why exactly did the Saints let go of Reggie Bush? Well, I think that, you know, well, one, if you look at Reggie, I mean, for what he was able to do, he was perfect for this offense. But the problem was, one, he was going to make too much money, and that was probably the big thing. They're not going to pay him $11.5 million for, for the number of touches he gets in the game. Uh, two, injury issues throughout his career. He hadn't played a complete season throughout the year which was by far his best year as an NFL pro. So when you factor those two things, then it was, a, it was a no-brainer. And then you get a guy like Darren Sproles, who if you look at the two players, Darren's a little bit older, but Darren, numbers-wise, in every category, was better than Reggie Bush was last year. And he played a complete season. So while it was tough to see Reggie go because he was one of the faces of the franchise, you realize that what you got in Darren Sproles is a guy that should be able to pick up the slack if not advance a little bit further. Um, and then, of course, you know, the rest of the running back core, uh, it, it's very, very solid. You know, Reggie wasn't going to get a lot of touches here. He wants to be in an offense where he's the main focal point, and he was never going to be that here in New Orleans. We've talked about positions that have had a lot of depth. Give me one position, in your opinion, that you think is a weaker point and that they could improve. Wow, a weaker point? I would say... Um, I have to say linebacker. You know, if, if you look at the linebacking core, there were about eight guys, seven guys going for two spots this year in training camp. It was never, ever decided who was going to play alongside Johnson Delma. I mean, from Scott Shanley to, I mean, just, you know, they put in with so many guys, Jonathan Casillas, um, that, and all these guys were pretty much even players. They were good players. They weren't great players. They were good players. But no one ever stood above, stood above the other guy in terms of getting that job next to uh, Johnson Bowman. So I, I would say that's probably the big question about the football team right now is who's going to stand out in the linebacking core outside of Johnson Bowman. We know he's going to be on, on the field every down in every game, but who's going to be next to him? It looks like right now it's going to be Johnson to see us on one side, and on the other side it may be Scott Chandler, but it remains to be seen. So I would say that that's the big question about the football team right now is linebacking. 
Juan, what will it take for the Saints to make a trip back to the Super Bowl? Well, I think they have to play better defense. The offense is going to be there, uh, but they've got to be able to play the kind of defense that took them to the Super Bowl two years ago. Um, you know, forcing the turnover, coming up with the, uh, the loose balls. Um, you got to have some luck. Everyone, you have to have that. It's not all about, you know, the most skilled team. Sometimes the ball has to bounce your way, and we know two years ago it bounced the same way every time. So, but I think the most important thing, this team has to play well on defense, uh, force turnovers, uh, be opportunistic, uh, and, and do a better job of stopping the run. Um, if they can do that, you know, this team can score with anybody, and they could be, their offense is as good as anybody's in the league. Um, they, they could be knocking on the door to the Super Bowl again. Last question for you, Juan. Over under 10 wins this year, what do you think? Wow. Over under 10 wins. I'm going to say... It's a good number, isn't it? it? You know what? I would have put them at 10 wins. I think the schedule is really difficult this year. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to say over. Because they're going to have to win at least 10 games to make the playoff out of this division. You know, with, with Atlanta's going to win their 10 games, maybe 11. The Saints get to win 10 or 11 games. You know, Tampa Bay, you're not sure what you can get out of those guys. Uh, Carolina is the whipping board of the division. So I'm going to say, oh, I think the Saints get 11 wins this year. Uh, it's going to be a tough one to get tomorrow night in Green Bay, but you, I think they have as good a chance as anybody to win in Green Bay with all the hype and everything. That's pressure on the, on the Packers to win that first game. So uh, I think the Saints get 11 wins this year.